Hey there. Once upon a time, a long time ago, like 2017, in the meager beginnings of this channel, long before I had a crew of 30 plus people rebuilding my synth setup inside Universal Studios, I made a video about lasers. And in that video about lasers, I shined it through a water tank with ink to subtly affect and make changes in an ambient track. And while I was setting that up and making that, something clicked in my head that was pretty important to this channel and my relationship with synthesizers in general. This is a great reason why one would prefer or build a modular synthesizer. MIDI is incredibly convenient for hooking electronic instruments up to one another. However, it is digital. It needs to be encoded and decoded. So therefore, it can only really work with other MIDI devices. Control voltage, on the other hand, or CV, is just that, voltage that can control things. A gate can be made by merely licking a patch cable. While you should absolutely be safe and use care and know what you're doing when hooking things up to your modular synthesizer, it does offer you the option of being able to hook up anything you want to your modular synthesizer to affect the sound in whatever synth patch that you're conjuring up. Now, if you've spent like $10,000 on a modular synthesizer and don't feel like subjecting it to a daily game of Russian roulette, that is totally understandable. And there are some boutique products that exist to aid you in powerful acoustic experimentation. And today we're going to be playing with one of those products, the Cicada. So when I first got this massive Cicada kit in the mail from Physical Synthesis, I didn't really know much about how it worked other than it being a physical bridge synthesizer. There was no user manual available at the time. There was no loop pop video. So I just invited some friends over and we just played with it. And to be honest, it was actually way more fun than I even expected because I usually do taper my expectations with less musical things as I am an avid player of boring old chromatic musical instruments. So while it was very easy for me to create these evolving drones, both tonal and atonal, and get completely lost in them for very long periods of time, I will keep my demonstrations moving along rather quickly because I do realize that this may be one of those things that is best enjoyed in person. So the Cicada is sold in a few different kit varieties, and in mine, I have two dual amplifiers. The amps have a bass and treble in, which probably shouldn't be taken as literally as it sounds, but rather used creatively. It also has a DC offset adjustment knob, which can also be controlled with CV or control voltage. And then this can be hooked up to these actuators, which I suppose we could also call transducers or even vibrators, are adjustable in height. And you can just plug in a bridge or a wing into them. And there's a variety of bridges that come with this kit. The bridges go on a soundboard, which is a surface that has four contact mics or pickups under it. And I have three soundboards. I have wood, plastic, and foam. They're very malleable and they can actually be used as a four point CV control surface once you hook it up to the pre, which gives you both your final audio output from the soundboard and your four CV control outputs. I do realize that all of this stuff might sound a bit complicated for some people, but fear not. I figured all of this stuff out by myself and it is part of my job to try and make it make as much sense throughout this video as possible. And if I can't do that, there is now a user manual that explains these connections in fine detail. So without further ado, let's get weird.
what you're looking at right now is the tip of the cicada's wing touching the surface of the wood and you're looking at it through a hundred millimeter macro lens through a bunch of extension tubes. To give you an idea of how close we are zoomed in, I'm going to gently touch the wing with my fingertip. Now the reason I have this set up this way is because the vibrations on the cicada are so subtle that you cannot see them with the naked eye. So that's how it works. Now there's something you should know about me, especially if you plan on getting into a boxing match with me, and that is that I have a freakishly long reach. And because of this, I have a modular case that has elbow rests so I could patch my way through life without too much discomfort. And this comes in a lot of handy when we have things like the touche here, and of course, the cicada.
So I have this looped back into itself through a malt, and what you're hearing right now is just feedback. And I'm going to try and get some sort of distortion from that. Not a high harmonic of it, because that hurts my ears. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Oof, nasty. Now I'm going to introduce another waveform that is almost at the exact same pitch as the initial feedback. And it shouldn't sound all that different. Now if my understanding of acoustic physics is not completely off, when I move the soundboard, it should actually change the pitch of the original feedback. Just like experimenting and stuff. So here I have the glass vase on top of the wooden panel with the contact mics under it. And then I have a sine wave coming through this sideways cicada wing. And then this one's not even turned on yet, but I assume it'll be something atonal. And I'm just gonna pour water into the vase and hopefully not destroy my entire modular. <laughs> So late last night, I got the idea to come downstairs and rig up a laser to 
point directly at the transducer with the hopes that the reflection of the laser would show me a pretty cool pattern. However, the vibration wasn't quite strong enough and it wasn't quite focused enough because this isn't a mirror, it is brushed metal. So I put a piece of a mirror on top of it and I could see a little bit of a pattern and it looked pretty cool. So to be able to see the pattern more clearly, we need to exaggerate the vibration from the transducer. And to do this, I will take a very lightweight plastic Petri dish, which will go on top of the transducer. I'll put a condom around it in which the latex will vibrate a whole bunch. And then I'll put an even smaller broken mirror piece on top of the condom. And I feel like if you're using a condom to exaggerate the waveform coming from a laser, then you're probably not going to be using it for anything else. What I really need is one of those little plastic jello shot shot glasses. I feel like that would do an even better job. What I really need is a life. That sounds pretty awesome. No good. Well, that failed spectacularly. <laughs> I'm sorry for wasting your time. Weirdly, a balloon works even better, and I think we have it working now. I used a little bit of a bigger piece of a broken mirror shard, and I am introducing more DC offset. So, what do you think? I think that was a lot of fun, and I think that the cicada definitely has its place in long, drawn-out, meditational sound-making and drone sessions that probably aren't best portrayed in a gear overview video on YouTube. I still have a lot of ideas, though, and I think it would be really fun and entertaining to do a live stream where multiple people can pitch in and brainstorm different ideas and everybody listen to the sound over the course of a few hours. Now the price. The basic setup for the Cicada comes in at just under $1,000. And if you want two actuators, two amps, a bunch of soundboards, a bunch of bridges, that price can get up near $2,700, which is definitely a premium. Now, naturally, high sticker prices for extremely limited boutique modular synth products shouldn't surprise anybody in this space. But if you're the type of person who wants to get into experimenting with timbre with tangible things safely, there's not that many options available. The build quality is exceptional. These seem like they were made in a damn Budweiser commercial, and I feel like you would have to do a whole lot of bad things to it for it to not work anymore. I think my only slight complaint or the only thing I would change about it is that these cables were a little bit noisy when they were next to something like a power strip or my phone. That could obviously be fixed by just moving it away from your power strip or your phone, or you could also just get a shielded SATA cable, which costs, I don't know, $3, and you probably have one in your house anyway. And that's it. You'll be seeing the cicada in my workflow in the future, as this is definitely my type of thing. 
If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. If there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. If you want access to a large community with monthly songwriting challenges, unreleased music that you hear on this channel, audio assets, coupons for music gear and software, then my Patreon is for you and you can join for as little as $1. All right, see you later. Bye.